A fault is a weakness, a defect, a fracture. Faults divide, tear, and consume. Here in the city of Chester's chasm, we struggle to maintain that precarious balance over the precipice in the earth, in our lives, and in our hearts. This story is about four teenagers with faults of their own. The fault between my faith and freedom. The fault between my family and identity. The fault between my choice and my obligation. The fault between my life and death. As these fractures grow, we stand at the edge and ask what must we sacrifice to sate the void's endless hunger? Is it possible that the answer lies within all our faults? Greetings, and welcome to All Our Faults, a Monster Hearts 2 actual play podcast. I am your MC, Mistress Winter. During the editing of a previous episode, I received some very valuable feedback from a listener who has not been initiated into the world of tabletop role-playing games such as Monster Hearts. In short, the inclusion of dice rolls and out-of-character moments need more context. To that end, I will be producing a primer on what the Monster Hearts 2 role-playing game is all about, and how its mechanics, or rules, affect the story that we're telling here. I hope you'll bear with me until after the holidays, though. I've barely had enough time to put this episode together, so it may be at least another episode or two before I can put it in the can, so to speak. We have some content warnings for this particular episode. They include the description of the death and disfigurement of an adolescent, veiled domestic violence, and veiled victim blaming. Time codes can be found in the show description. Please continue listening after the episode for more shoutouts and thank yous. Chapter 4 Giveth and Taketh Away So, Bert, we're going to start with you this evening. So, you've made all of your deliveries. Yeah. It's getting pretty late. What are you doing? I think I'm probably going to go over my some of my case notes, some of the things, to give a report to Mr. Amundo, because he's been asking about those just earlier in the day. I will go back home, and then once I reach there, I'll pull out the two kind of runic tokens that I have. Mm -hmm. Place them over my eyes and then do a trust fall. And then I will awaken in my little undead corner of the world, my little office. The ritual that you perform, putting the coins over your eyes, hands folded, falling back. You've done this quite a few times by now. As you fall backward, shadow rushes up to envelop you. It feels like the entire world just flips upside down. We're, we're going into the upside down, in a way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you find yourself back on your feet, strangely enough. Or maybe not strangely, as you've done this a few times. <laughs> I think the first time it threw me off, but I'm used to it by now. Yeah, the first time you probably stumbled expecting to be on the ground, so you didn't support yourself with your legs until you realized that that would make you fall again. Yeah. This time, however, being practiced at it, you simply step off from your point. Your bedroom has been replaced by these dark wood walls with windows peering out into blackness. The eerie silence that pervades this place is unsettling, to say the least. But even more are the subsonic sounds, the ambiance, if you will, that is kept at bay by the walls, but you know it is out there. This thrum of dark energy, this lapping of unnatural waves against the hull of this boathouse. 
And if you were to leave this sanctuary, as you have done maybe once before, maybe out of curiosity, despite Mr. Amuto's warnings, the wailing would commence, building to a shrill as the ghosts and the dead of the sticks call for aid, call in their pain and suffering and fear. Have you decorated this place? I think a, a little bit, but it's not complete because I think all of my notes and like maps and stuff are scattered between all of the locations I frequent, all of my little haunts. So there's some in my room, there's some in Greasy Gary's supply closet that I work from sometimes. I think I have a couple of, like at school. So there's just kind of incomplete pieces. And also I don't want anyone like if anyone's following me or also trying to solve the same mysteries I am, I don't want them to get the complete picture. So I have scattered my clues and puzzles throughout <laughs> my haunts. Interesting. I like that. That's really cool. So what equipment, what tools do you have established here? So I think I probably have my main conspiracy board with all of the really important clues because I'm the only one that has access to this place that I know of. Mm -hmm. I probably also have some, some maps maybe a few occult books that I could find about this place, the death sticks, maybe how it works in ancient times. Cause I know Mr. Muto is always talking about, you know, the cycle. So maybe trying to find out a little bit more about that. Cause I'm newly in the cycle now. So yeah, I think, and then maybe like a tape recorder where I can record some audio notes. Your murder board is a large piece of stone like a dark granite that you are able to chalk on, mm -hmm. as well as pin things up with magnets. The, the stone is highly magnetic, so you're able to attach things with little decorative magnets. You've even got one that's a Greasy Gary magnet that you put up there. Yeah. What are you looking for here? I think um, I'm compiling some of the activity that I've seen recently and then um, definitely want to focus on those reenactors that I just met, because I'm not sure still if they're real or ghosts, that whole encounter was was a lot. They were either very convincing or uh, there's some kind of big clue that I've missed. Sure. Uh, that there are dead going around ordering pizzas. <laughs> 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 and also, I, th I think Mr. Amuto gave me a warning that something is big is coming so if there's any leads or anything to that nature that i've stumbled across or something that i've overlooked looking back over like just trying to find out getting ahead of what what is coming or what might be coming okay i think we're gonna truncate this by having you roll to gaze into the abyss all right and that is dark i'm not good at dark but we will see oh i'm gonna get some experience because that's a two <laughs> <laughs> Your murder board, aside from a few small errant paranormal events, incidents that you've taken care of, has largely not changed in recent months. Even as you stare at the board, an article that you don't remember placing up on the board catches your attention. It looks to be from... Oh, let's, let's come up with a local newspaper. The Daily Gazette? That's boring. Isn't that a real newspaper? I was say, I think that might be a real one. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like a real newspaper in a hundred towns. I was going to say, like, are you, are you looking for, like, a weekly world news or, like, an actual newspaper? Like a local one. Um, something that the, the city's residents would use for local news. Okay, so, like, a legit one. Yeah. Um, I would say... The Falls Inquirer. Okay. So the Falls Inquirer. Yeah. So the Falls Inquirer. It is an article clipped from one of the last standing print newspapers in Chester's Chasm. The headline reads, Homeless City Causes Viral Outbreak. Citizens urge officials to tighten restrictions around homeless camps. Is that is that near here? Is that is it a recent one? Is it a recent headline? It is recent. Okay. Hmm. Just in the last week. Oh, okay. Now, this article 
may be mundane in nature, but it's up on your board. Right. And you said, I don't remember exactly putting it up there either. Correct. Okay. Can I take it down and look look closer at it? Is there anything, any names that stick out or any events that I would have remembered or... I think that's going to be another gaze into the abyss. Okay. Maybe you can do better. That's another two. All right. Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to stop asking for those because you're going to level up way too fast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember anything about the article in particular. Okay. In your limited experience, you have run into a few malevolent undead entities that have caused issues like minor pandemics and epidemics and just made whole swaths of people sick by their presence alone. Whether or not this is the case has yet to be determined. Okay. Do I have any, like, undead contacts I could possibly reach out to and see? Ooh. Sure. Who do you know? (laughs) (laughs) Who do I know? Maybe I've met somebody that died in the chasm at some point. Okay. There used to be an orphanage in the mall. Now, we're talking early 1900s. There was a massive fire that consumed large swaths of the mall, and the orphanage had been taken by it. Most of the children housed there survived. There was one, however, who did not. His spirit, lacking a structure to inhabit and haunt, now kind of wanders the alleys and streets around an apartment building that had been built in instead. We'll call him Alvin. Alvin, okay. You have him on tap as kind of a undead CI, Mm -hmm. an informant on the goings-on in the spirit world. This street urchin spirit likes to stay up on current events as far as his influence can stretch. Okay, I think I'm going to grab my notebook and my tape recorder, and then I guess I would leave the same way I came, put two those two tokens over my eyes and roll back into my room. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that, and then is it late enough that I have to like sneak out, or can I just, should I just leave? It's pretty late. It's after, we'll say after 11. Okay. However, if I remember your relationship with your dad well enough, I don't know that he's going to care. Okay. I just, if I can avoid talking to him, I will, but I just didn't want to have to explain where I was going at 11 o'clock with a little briefcase. You head down the stairs and take a peek in the living room. You'll see the light from the TV screen flickering as whatever show is playing on it. The silhouette of your dad in his chair, a couple beer bottles next to the chair, Indicated that he's probably relaxed for the evening. If he's not asleep, he will be very soon. Okay, I'm just gonna... Okay, well, good old dad. And then head outside and get on my bike and head to the apartment complex. So you grab up your briefcase, jump on your bike, and head out into the night. Pedaling past the residential areas into the mall proper. And end up on Picante Street where you know you'll find poor little Alvin. The street is barely lit. Several of the street lights having been blown out or put out by rocks. The apartment buildings are in desperate disrepair, needing a lot more than just uh, power washing to meet uh, city compliance regulations. You see the odd individual relaxing on a stoop or uh, on the fire escapes, maybe out for a smoke. But you know where to find Alvin down one of the alleys around the 300 apartments. As you turn the corner, you peer down the dark alleyway past the large dumpsters, discarded trash bags that just never made it there. And you locate a young boy 
at the end of the alley. He's sitting cross-legged at the end, playing with something. He looks to be about 13-ish. All right, I'm going to head head over to him and just kind of slowly, slowly approach, because I know there's a lot of people, not a lot of people around, but just not the best place to be. So I just want to like, hey, hey, Elvin, it's me, Bert. Don't want to like scare him or anything like that. Just kind of slowly approach. The boy looks up and you're once again faced with his gruesome visage, how half of his face is blackened and burned nearly to the bone, whereas the other half is a little scorched, but not worse for wear. His whole being is a bit translucent. It's like somebody took the translucent or the (laughs) opacity slider and put it at like 80%. Oh, hey, Bert, what brings you around here this time of night? No, oh, you know, buddy, I've, I've got some questions for you. I just wanted to know what you've been seeing and hearing around these parts. <sighs> you never come by to play tiddlywinks, do you? I mean, hey, school started for me today, so, you know, it's been kind of, and it's been a busy summer. Yeah, yeah, you only come around when you want something. I'm sorry, I will try to find some time coming up, you know, to tiddlywinks and ball and hoop and hoop and chain. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly. Marbles. Mar- marbles, yes. I know you love the marbles. Hey, speaking of, what you got for me? Uh, did you, did you get? You, did, you, did you get what I asked for? Um, what did you ask for again? I know I take a lot of notes, but I did not take notes on the last thing you asked me. Come on, man! I wanted the cat's eye, the cat's eye marble. It's I. I've got to add it to my collection. Okay. N- next time I am in town and at the toy store, I will look to see if they have that cat's eye you can't find it in your modern toy stores you need to get it for me special especially if you you know want to come around and you know ask me random things okay by special you mean how exactly i'm dead and even i've heard of ebay okay no need to get snarky uh yeah i will look i'm making some money with working for the pizza guy, so once I get my paycheck in, I will look online for a cat's eye marble. Any particular color you need? It's it's gotta be the amber one. Okay. Amber, I will write that down. Amber cat's eye marble for Alvin. I I better have it very soon. Like, you promised. I did promise. I did promise. And and I'm sorry. Just with with school coming up, I'm trying to get my business off the ground. There's There's a lot happening, but... I definitely need to take, make time for my, my friend Alvin. You are correct. So what do you want this time? Um, I was just wondering, I was looking back over some of the notes and cases I've been working on, and I saw this headline about this homeless camp causing a viral outbreak. And, you know, some of the, the people that are kind of in charge of the cycle of life and death have warned me that something's coming. So I'm just trying to figure out, is this... Is this it? Is there some kind of epidemic happening and this is the start of it or? I don't know nothing about no large or big things coming and stuff. I haven't heard anything unusual, but. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I'm gonna take out my tape recorder and hit play and then speak into it. Hey everybody, this is uh, The Ransom Notes, hosted by Bert Ransom and Alvin. This is just recorded for posterity, but Alvin has some interesting news for us, so take it away, Alvin. I don't know why you bring that out. You know that it doesn't record what I'm saying. You know, it might. It might pick up. That's why I went with the old school cassette model, so that is why. And then I digitize it later. All right, all right. I have heard rumblings in the spirit streets that some new spirits have been wandering around out of towners and they're causing a little bit more trouble than they usually do. It's possible that one of these visitors is nesting among the poor folk of the city. Okay. Now, when you say out of towners, do you mean out of town, like in the land of the living that they came here or they came from the land of the the dead to here from the, the chasm? Oh, I don't know. All I know is that they're dead and that they are now here. Okay. Are they causing problems or are they just... Yes. 
Hmm, Mr. Muno didn't mention any. This would be something that someone that is in charge of life or death, the cycle would, would tell their apprentice, their intern. I don't know. Maybe he just expects you to know it or figure it out. Huh. Well, that is something I'll need to speak to him about because I can't be expected to know about new spirits moving in and causing havoc on the inhabitants of this town. I mean, I'm doing my best to try to- You're not expected to? Because you just did. Yeah, but I had to go on my own accord. Like, I don't know how he thought I would know to find that out, especially kind of, you said they're already causing trouble. Like, I think he would have would have been best if he would have told me ahead of time so I could get ahead of the trouble. I don't know, this arrangement is, there's some things we need to work out, but not not with you, Alvin, you, you and I are great. So I get to keep on keeping on? Yeah, keep on keeping on, and I will look for that amber marble and yeah, just keep anything else going on. I mean, thank you so much for what you've given me. That's definitely something I need to look out for. But if there's anything else. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, find me something fun. I like new games. I mean, it is kind of boring here sometimes. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. I don't know. Because you can interact with marbles. To an extent. Maybe some cards? Do you, do you like cards? Would that be fun? No. Okay. What about coloring? Do you like to color? Draw? No. Oh, okay. I just thought... That's sissy stuff. Well, I mean, there are a lot of great artists out here. You know, I appreciate the arts and design. Music? Do you like music? Did you listen to music back when you were alive? Bands? Not a whole lot. Okay. Because, you know, living in an orphanage, it's not like we had one of Mr. Edison's gramophones or anything. Okay. I don't know if, I mean, I'm sure those are on eBay, but those can't be cheap. So I'm saying that I didn't listen to music a lot when I was a lot. I did not have them me. Okay. We'll try to find maybe some music you, you like, and I'll look for some toys that are maybe easily accessible for someone like you. Yeah, you do that. Besides toys or ways to keep you entertained, is there anything else you need? Anything I can do for you? If you have any extra ectoplasm. I don't even have the normal amount of ectoplasm, so I don't even know how I'd have extra ectoplasm. It's revitalizing. Okay, I will keep my eyes out. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I might run into an unfriendly ghost and I'll get rid of them and give the leftovers. Is that how that works for you? I'm not picky. Okay, okay. Well, it's kind of late, so I think I probably need to pack it up for the night, but thank you about that tip about the, the new spirits moving in, and you, you they haven't messed with you, have they? Oh no, I might keep my ear to the ground, but I like to stay out of sight. That's that's probably for the best. That's the best way to handle it. Yeah. So don't go spreading my name or anything around. Okay, I haven't. I'm still kind of new to this whole thing, but there's not a lot of people I trust about what I, what I do on the side of being an agent of the cycle. That'll definitely just stay between us. Okay. All right. Have you do other people talk to you? Have you been approached by anyone else? Is there anyone else that can see you or interact with you or anything like that? There's Wendy, the medium, who likes to come by now and again. Okay. Interesting. What What do you guys talk about? Is it private? Or? Oh, she likes to use me as a spy. For what reason? To give her information that she can use in her psychic business. Okay. D have you told her about me or any of anything I'm working on? No. You haven't gone to visit her, have you? I haven't. Then no. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, all right. I'll get to work on that marble. Thank you. And anything else that I think you might find fun. And I will, I don't know, next time I'll come by to visit and we'll, we'll just hang out. We don't have to, it doesn't have to be work. Okay. Stay safe. Stay out of sight. Watch out. Keep an eye out for those new evil spirits. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, see, I'll be seeing you around. Bye. So I'm going to get back on my bike and head back home. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. The next morning, Michael, when you mm -hmm. wake up. <laughs> wake up. I just brood quietly and wait for the sun to pop up. <laughs> you can hear movement throughout the house in those early hours as your parents go to prepare for their high-powered jobs. Are you getting ready for school? Uh, yes. Get up, bathe, dress, pretend to eat. The normal. When you come down to pretend to eat, 
you sit down at the table with your brother Gideon, and your mom comes in. Mother, you're home. Letitia Delacroix hurries in, always moving very quickly and purposefully, seemingly trying to get as much done as she possibly can at any given moment. She addresses Gideon first. Annabelle will be here in about five minutes, so make sure you finish your breakfast. Michael, whose are these? And she holds out the keys. Oh, those are a friend's. A friend's? Yes. They're a friend's. A friend lent you a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Yes. And let you just drive home with it. Yes. Friends were drinking last night, and they weren't safe to drive. So I brought them home, and then had to get myself home. Sorry. Roll to keep your cool. Mm Mm-hmm. Thirteen. Your mom narrows her eyes, searching for any gaps in or weaknesses in that very generic, vague story. Who do they belong to? Who is the wealthiest student at school? Ooh. Or no, who's the second wealthiest student at school? (laughs) Outside of me. Uh, You know what? We will say that is Taylor. Yeah, Taylor Lyman. Taylor Lyman. And you're going to be returning it today, correct? Uh, I do believe so, yes. Good. I do not want to see a stolen car police report coming across my desk today. I have too many other things to do than to handle your frivolities. Of course not, Mother. Good. I would never. You know this. Then you won't need a ride or anything to school? Today, no. You're going to take care of that vehicle? Unlike the one that you wrecked this summer? I'm going to roll to keep my cool at that one. Okay. That one's going to get under my skin. (laughs) Sure. Six. Six. Yes, mother. Do not take that tone with me. You totaled your car, driving recklessly. Do you know how difficult it was to get you out of those citations? I'm just glad that your your little friend in the vehicle didn't press charges for any injuries he may have had. Perhaps this will teach you to better control your vehicle. Yes. Good. Now I'm running late, and I will be late. So make sure Gideon gets put to bed. Do you mean put on the bus, Mother? It is the morning. Annabelle will see to that. And she will kiss Gideon on the head and head out without... As much as a, have a good day. Michael will, the second she leaves, turn to Gideon. Hello, little brother. How's breakfast? It's good. Okay, good. He's trying to stay invisible and away from this conversation, but now that it's passed, he's slowly coming out of his little shell. Michael will walk over and scruff his head. Mm, No! Finish your breakfast and finish getting ready. I'll wait until the nanny is here. Hey, uh, you wait until Annabelle gets there to head off to school. Let's skip ahead to lunchtime. You know, everybody loves a chance to gossip and talk with their friends at lunchtime, including the four of you. I think I don't normally sit with everybody else. I'm usually on my own. But today, I think I'm going to try to sit next to Michael and see what, what he's got going on. Okay. Uh, Michael will normally be sort of off on his own, probably staring like at William Harker from the distance, just finding a way to sort of, you know, pine. Bert, do you take notice of Michael's distraction? I think I do, but I think I'm also distracted by Michael, so I'm not paying too much attention to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, so you'll come to me sort of staring off into the distance, and I might not notice you sitting down at first. All right, yeah, so I'll just sit down and just be like, hey, hey, Michael, how's, how's it been going? Oh, hi. Oh, hey, yeah, hey. This this is different. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're back on, uh, you know, on the yearbook committee together. and Yeah. You know, we haven't talked really all summer except for, you know. So, yeah, I just thought I'd say hi. How are you? 
yeah, I'm, I'm good, you know, staying, staying busy, but for the most part, I'm doing all right. How, how about you? Um, or how are you doing? I'm fine. Okay. I was able to get a new car, I guess. Um, so that's nice. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah. We're going to see how that goes. Yeah, what, what kind is it? What, what is it? Uh, it's... Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't worried, but um, I'm, I'm glad you got something reliable. Yeah, it's awesome. Speaking of, have you connected your key chains to the new set of keys? Yes. I would have at some point by now realized that they are missing, and I don't know where they are, and I am not going to mention it. Okay. Because you haven't pulled out your keys, so... Yeah, and I would have, knowing Bert's possible sensitivities around our economic disparity, would have avoided showing the keys anyways, knowing the logo that's on them. Fair enough. <laughs> um, how are you enjoying your book so far? I know we're just a day in, but you've always been, like, you know, super excited about your photography and stuff, so you get a chance to put that on our platform. That's cool, right? Yeah, I am excited about that and the fact that I was able to be able to use my own camera. The cameras they have were a little less exciting. Mm, yeah. So that that at least is interesting. We'll see how that goes. Cool. Uh, well, you know, speaking of of your book, you know, you got the back to school bash coming up, and uh, you know, I I wanted to do a hard hitting expose on what's really happening, the truth behind this school, but I have to, you know, go to the back to school bash thing, so. If you wanted to go, we could, you know, team up and go together and you could take pictures and I could ask around how everyone's feeling about school. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. I wasn't really given a directive. Oh, yeah, sure. We can go. Oh, yeah, cool. That makes sense. Yeah. It, 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 that's what I was thinking. It makes sense that we would go at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. To the mandatory thing we both have to go to. I, I, yeah, I guess. If it's Friday. That's fast. Okay, yes. Should we ask anyone else? Should we ask... I mean, the whole school is, is going to be there, so I think anyone that's going to be there is going to be there already. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm sure the rest of the yearbook club, we can have like a quick little meetup about what we're supposed to be doing or pictures we're supposed to be taking or whatever. I just... At that point, you'd be able to kind of sweep the lunchroom to look for Crispin and Celine. I think Crispin and Celine are tucked in an unassuming corner of the lunchroom, ideally one with a window so they can kind of look out a little bit. And I feel like they very much, as they did on their phone call last night, are sort of like parallel playing, like they each have a little project that they're working on and just kind of like silently. But also they're sitting at this table, this whole table, and it's just the two of them, but they're sitting right next to each other. Yeah. Celine's legs are practically not in Crispin's lap, but almost draped over his legs just because that tends to be how she sits when she's comfortable around someone. We love the ADHD. Yeah, yeah, it's a vibe. And she's, yeah, she's just sketching away. And I think he's using her leg as a prop for the Bible he's reading. It's like a super dusty old Bible too. It's not like a new edition or anything. It's like one from his dad's so not the new King, King James version yeah no 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 it's <laughs> dusty the the cover is cracked uh it's old af to the point where like if you're looking at him you're kind of thinking oh man should you maybe be wearing archival gloves my dude but i <laughs> yellow, think kind of like aged yellow pages yeah, and stuff yeah it's bad it's it's this bible has seen some shit man and I think it's one that his dad gave him after the semi-disastrous performance at the church with the instructions to take it to heart. And I think this is a Bible very specific to the Guardians that talks a lot more about their sacred purpose. Crispin has like, is kind of flipping through it like, okay, yeah, like I, I know this stuff. Uh, he had never taken it super seriously because he had always sort of assumed that by the time his time came, he would have found a way out of it. Uh, so now that it's here, he's just like, oh, shit. Like, kind of cramming, almost. Like, all right, well, I guess this is real. 
let me ask a quick question. Has your father ever laid hands on you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm uncomfortable. That's why I'm laughing. It's a common defense mechanism. You're fine. This morning, after you got back from church, the anger that he took out on you has left you sore and bruised in places you weren't even sure you could be sore in. Yeah, Crispin is absolutely wearing like a really old, soft, long sleeve t-shirt and like his his softest, most stretchy like pair of slacks in an effort to be as comfortable as possible today after this morning. I would like you to record that as one harm. Okay, I will do that cool i mean not cool but yeah cool. <laughs> speaking of things like that since crispin and celine are so close together and she would be sketching uh you might notice crispin that there are like bruises around her wrists she has not said anything about this she is ignoring it entirely potentially but they are there uh, I think Crispin absolutely would notice because he notices everything about Celine. Oh, really? <laughs> Listen, he's real sad boy. Okay, Pre- he's precious. We love him. We love to see it. We do. I think he takes a few minutes to work up the courage, but then he sort of gently leans over and just pulls the sleeve, like the wrist of her sleeve, back to get a better look at it. And he goes, "Is this what you didn't want to talk about last night?" She freezes as soon as you go to touch her and she's in this like suspended moment. Almost if she's going to flinch, but she doesn't. But she's definitely not expecting something positive of this. And as you ask her that, she'll just, oh, I mean, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Maybe, yeah, yeah. It, it, it does, it does matter. It does matter. But if you don't, if you don't want to talk about it, we don't have to. I just, um, I, I, I'm here. I, I, I care. It matters to me. It's really, it, it's really fine. It's nothing. I just, wrong place, wrong time, I guess. I mean, is there any such thing as the right place? <laughs> Maybe not. You promise you're okay? She'll kind of look up at Crispin and study his face for a while, just kind of searching for any sign of ungenuineness. I can't think of a better word. (laughs) (laughs) Before she just kind of cracks ever so slightly. I mean, no, not really. What can I do? You being here is really nice. I feel safe with you. And that's not something I often feel anymore. Crispin sort of preens at that. Uh, that That is clearly extremely pleasing to him. And he's trying not to be a douchebag about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he specifically doesn't choose that moment to like put his arm around your shoulder. But I think instead he gently with his thumb rubs over the darkest part of the bruise and just goes I hate it when you get hurt you don't deserve that and just if you ever need me you know where to find me there's clearly an inner conflict that is crossing over Celine's face Crispin wouldn't know what it's about except for the fact that he's known Celine for a while and knows that in recent months at the you know, end spring-ish of last year, of last school year, there was a change in her. Uh, She's very much so considering like all the ramifications of what Crispin just said, particularly the, you don't deserve to be hurt. I hate it when you get hurt. And she is quite literally being hunted by some fae being. Uh, So there's like some guilt that flits across her face. There's some confusion even like some anger before she just kind of settles on trying to close her expressions off to Crispin but it is too late he would have already seen the emotions kind of flit over her face well uh, sometimes people get hurt it happens and we just have to live with it I suppose Crispin is visibly unhappy with that answer he's doing his best not to like 
make Celine feel bad, but I think that sort of triggers his white boy saviorism uh, reflex, and he just goes, well, that's not the way the world should be, and, you know, it, if I ran the world, then I I would rain down fire on the, the people who bring harm and like I think he he goes on a little tirade almost and I think he only stops when he realizes that he sounds like his father Mm -hmm. (laughs) ouch (laughs) oh that's good when everybody makes that noise I, I, I love all of that we're gonna pause that real quick our scene is going to flip back over to where Michael and Bert are sitting. Uh, hey, can you do a quick favor for me, Michael, if you're not, not too busy or anything? Y- yes. So I've been working on, just as a little side project, it's silly, just kind of like a little podcast thing, but I haven't quite figured out if my the mic that my co-host is using is working. So if you could listen to it and tell me if you hear another person on the recording uh that would be awesome because he he's kind of like us um kind of like different than like normal people are you trying to get me to listen to your podcast i mean (laughs) no episodes are out yet i just wanted to know if if it can be picked up because he's kind of like a supernatural being kind of like us so maybe other people, other supernatural beings can hear him or not. Or... Oh, is that why you sat with me at lunch? Yes, that is the only reason why I came over here to sit with you at lunch. Yeah, sure, sure. Of co- Yes, yeah, I get it. There's like no one else who you can have list. Yes. Yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't want to you know, send it to somebody else and they can only hear me talking. So I thought maybe someone else that's kind of been through something like we've gone through. Yes, I know. Yes. Sorry that it was a morning. Yes, I will listen. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll just send it over to you. It's called the, the, the ransom note. Oh, that's, that's adorable. That's what you call it. I mean, it's a, it's a working title. It could, it could change to something else. It could be that. It could be something else. Yeah. Oh, cool. Sure. Yeah, it's so awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to see what you thought about it or whatever. Um, but yeah, I will see you Friday at the uh, back to school, back to school bash. Right. Yeah. I'll make sure to bring my camera and we'll get stuff for the yearbook. Yes. Yeah. The yearbook. That cool after school class club thing we do. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. And uh, how are you going to send me the files? Like email or over the, like, just send that on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you still have the same number? You haven't, like, changed it, like, when you... Yeah, of course. Cool. I will send that over. I may have to email, I will try sending it. It's, you know, it's a wave file. It's kind of big, so I may have to email it to you. Uh, Bert, but, Bert. Yeah. Chill. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally chill. I, I'm, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, um... Like, I know, like, is it just, like, how noisy it is in here? Jeez. Yeah, it's 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 pretty no- noisy. You know, I've kind of been working in my office, my home office, a lot. So, kind of just me, but being around people. Yeah, like, school sucks, but, like, it's okay. Just try to relax. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed. This is coming from me. I mean, but you're the most relaxed person I've ever met. Okay, but... Yeah, just send me the files to my number. I'll I'll listen to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. I will do that. And actually, there is uh, Crispin and Celine over there, so we can go over there and ask them if they wanted to. Are they, like, dating? I don't know. I've known them for, like, a day and a half, so... <laughs> Come on, let's go ask them. Come on, let's go. Oh, Okay, I just wanted to see, we could all go, the four of us, to the uh, back. Michael is standing up and walking over, expecting your following. Uh, like, I'm in the middle of my sentence, but I'm like, oh, oh, we're moving. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. As y'all are approaching, I think, like, Crispin would be on his tirade, 
and Celine is like visibly uncomfortable and I feel like and please Kat correct me if I'm if like I'm putting words into your mouth essentially sure that the tirade if it sounds if it starts sounding like Crispin's father would go into some of the like victim blaming type thing and like what sinners should hundred percent yes <laughs> yeah okay amazing so when as soon as that happens Celine's legs are coming off of Crispin she is like sitting up back straight she kind of like whips her head to like look directly at Crispin and like cut him off and say something and just at that moment is when Michael, like Dracula, kind of slides horizontally into the frame. <laughs> Hi, love birds. Are you like a thing now? Like that body language just screams it. Except now, that's weird. This this convergence right here is exactly when Crispin realizes he sounds exactly like his dad. Uh, Celine is about to hand it to him, and then <laughs> Michael just slides into view <laughs> with Bert like breathless behind. Hey, hey guys, uh, we just wanted to see if you guys wanted to. You, I mean, of course we're all going to the back to school bash, but maybe we wanted to go like as the four of us for uh, your book. Yeah, we were thinking of, like, grabbing stuff, like pictures and information for the yearbook. Made sense to me. It was Bert's idea. Crispin is so excited for this change of topic. Celine is sitting there clearly pissed. Like, Crispin would know. She is, like, seething. Yeah, I think he just went into, like, full preacher mode, which I don't know is a, if that's a thing that he has done ever in his life um so it's potentially the the, you know the influence of the upcoming vigil and and his morning with his father and father miller so he i think he is very cognizant of the fact that he has fucked up and celine has every right to be mad at him and so i think he sort of is fully avoiding eye contact with her yeah yeah uh we should definitely make plans to go together as a, as a group, as a, as a team. Wait, I've just had the perfect idea. It'll be a double date. <laughs> what? You okay with that, Bert? Sure. Okay, great. Are we bringing more people than just the four of us? Well, a double date means that we'll be on a date and then they'll be on a date. I didn't know y'all were dating. We're not, but I think it'd be cute. Okay. How do you two feel about that? I mean, we're also not dating. Yeah, yeah, that would be, that would be weird. That is like the wrong thing to say, and she gets like more pissed. <laughs> Crispin's not doing well. Oh, well, never mind. Slim, will you roll to keep your cool? Oh, no. Oh, that's a, that's a two. Slim, you're losing your cool. What does that look like? So I think that what this looks like from Celine is like she almost bristles kind of thing, but she's also not super comfortable with being like angry outwardly and stuff like that. Sure. So she kind of like there's this nervousness to it and she ends up like grabbing at her hair and kind of pulling it to one side and fidgeting with it, which would give Crispin a full view of the top of her fey mark, which he would probably think is a tattoo. Yes, but I'm going to add to that. Michael, as you get a glance at this tattoo, it shimmers red. You might be able to rationalize it as like this red pearlescent ink, but it just seemed to be something more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so like that happens and she's just kind of holding the anger in for a couple moments before she whips her head back around to just dead stare, glaring daggers at Crispin specifically. Oh, it would be weird to go on a date with me? God forbid you go on a date with someone like me. I'm so sorry. Some harlot who, you know, it's just her fault that she gets attacked, isn't it? And she just then gets up, slamming her hands against the cafeteria table and goes to just like walk away. Really storms away. 
Um, and I do think she ends up leaving her sketchbook in like the fit of anger. Fair enough. Bert is going to turn towards Crispin kind of like, um, no, I, I, I can kind of see where you're coming from. Like dating someone that you like work with. I don't know what the school's policy about that is. Crispin is going to dead eye stare at Bert. Like, really? Michael's going to put his hand on Bert's shoulder. Sorry, Bert. Looks like the double date's off. We'll just have to go as co-workers. I mean, that's what I wanted from the beginning. So I don't know where we're, what we're doing here. But I think I'm going to reach over and get Celine's uh, sketchbook. And then I was like, I I think this is Celine's. I'm going to try to give it back to her and like head to her where she stormed off. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of All Our Faults. Thank you to the Tabletop Tailspinners Network and director Emma Kokar for our home and all that you do for us. A shout out to our friends over at The Silent Secrets, a Monster Hearts 2 podcast over at Ghostlight Media. Their continued support means so much for our budding show. And a huge thank you to my wonderful cast. Abby Marie Carter, who can be found at Abby underscore Marie underscore Carter. Ben at DJ underscore Blindian. Juicy Garland at Juicy Garland. And Kat Kelly at Kat Kelly. They are wonderful collaborators and friends whom I'm proud to work with. Happy holidays to everyone who celebrates whatever you celebrate. And we hope that you have a wonderful new year to come from our hearts to yours. Oh, that's a, that's a two. Oh no. Oh no. (laughs) We are the two crew today. Oh, shout out to the two crew. Two, two, and two. Shout out to the two crew. I think we're up to two cubed. Bert Bert had two. I had two and, twos. And and then Crispin had one. So yeah, we're two cubed. <laughs> Please stop. Everything's going to plan. This has been a tale from the Tabletop Tailspinners Network.